recording. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, it says yeah, so corner it says recording. Yeah, I see that okay. recording. How long do we have? Do we have like forty minutes or something? Or well, as long as you need. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, no, I like that. The inner, the inner. What did you call it again? Please repeat that. I mean, I know what you're saying, but I just want to hear it again. I said the your biggest enemy is your inner me. Your yeah. N N E R. And yes. that's why you have to learn how to master yourself. And the biggest thing that you have to learn how to master within yourself is your emotions. Mm -hmm. So there's a formula, which is emotional intelligence equals life divided by you. <laughs> emotional so I know, I know what you mean by that, but I, I want you, could you explain that please? Of course. So emotional intelligence, when you yep. were created, depends on whatever your belief is, uh, Mother Earth, energy, frequency. I just happen to call it God for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe when your creator, my creator, God, created me, he created us with the gift of emotions. Yep. No one had to teach you how to be happy, sad, angry, mad. These emotions were already pre-programmed inside you, right? And your emotions are your superpower. But there's a difference in having emotions and being emotional. Because when you're emotional, you're no longer in control of your emotions. Mm -hmm. And the only difference between being emotional and having emotions is your emotional intelligence. How you choose to feel about your experience equals life. Life was here before you, right? You would agree? Mm -hmm. And life is made up of good experiences and bad experiences. And Poe, you are the common denominator of your own life. Every good experience you had, you were there. Mm -hmm. Every bad experience you had, you were there. So how you choose to feel about your good experiences and your bad experiences based off of your own emotional intelligence, you will create your own heaven and hell. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be mad, angry, sad, depressed. These are things that you should honor because they're your true feelings. But Lisa Nichols says you should let your pain become your gasoline to your automobile of success. Because sometimes your pain and anger or rage could take you further than love because you never want to feel that way again. So it's how you channel it. It's how you choose to use your feelings. What was that person's name again? Lisa Nichols. Oh, I know Lisa Nichols. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah, she's amazing. Brilliant young lady. Have you been to any of her uh, uh, events? I saw her speak at CEO Space. That's where I got to meet her and uh, my one of my mentors, Mr. Les Brown. Oh, that's uh, that's on my bucket list to meet Lisa Nichols. <laughs> yeah, Lisa's dope. She's super cool. Uh, Les well, made. I love her story when she talks about Jamil. Is it Jamil? When, you know, she was, you know, saying, you know, baby, I'm never going to have this time that I can't afford diapers for you, like nappies. I just love that she said that. And that's how that's the beginning of re taking responsibility for your life and for your actions for all that you do, right? Because she all clearly had to do an inventory yeah. of her you know, her thoughts and her actions. Yep. And then she's created uh, at least a million dollar uh, business, right? Yeah. I was recently in San Diego because, and that's one of the things that I, I um, so in Manny's event, I, I do energy work, healing people with their trauma. And I'm noticing that when I do that, it turns into a mindset thing because yes, the energetically and emotionally, you can release that. And I say energy, I I look at energy too, like Holy Spirit working through you. You know, it's a, it's a higher being that's helping you. Mm -hmm. And, but my, my biggest passion is to have people free and to have women free because men seem to grasp my experience okay men seem to grasp that that experience of older oh, can be free and they can do all these things whereas women tend to and i know i'm generalizing 
but women tend to be like, oh, they're like the second hand, you know, they're the support. The man does all the work. The man makes the money. The woman makes sure that he's happy. And, uh, you know, it is all the, all the comforts, you know, all the pleasures, everything, the whole thing is looked after where he can go out and do the thing. But I believe that there is a balance and that women can be that just the same because it helps bring them into who they are. So that's ultimately where I want to go. And so talking to Lisa Nichols is, is actually a huge example of that for me to say, yeah, like if she can do that, be a single mom who is trying to figure out how to bring nappies right. and then um, um, make herself a million dollar business. Yep. Then, you know, that's amazing. And then she's like, how many people she's inspired? And it doesn't just have to be women because look, it inspires you as well, right? Of course. Lisa's brilliant. Lisa's amazing. I will share a stage with her one day that will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so is that what you, what is, what is your dream? I want to hear your dream. Well, I don't dream no more <laughs> because I don't want dreams. I want realities because a lot of people dream about things, but a dream is merely a mirage of what could be. Okay. But yeah, 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 yeah. And but so <laughs> hear me out. a dream is a mirage of what could be, mm -hmm. but you have to put in the work to make it a reality. So I'm not saying dreams are bad. I'm saying people do this shoulda, coulda, woulda, but didn't. Right? Right, right. Yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. The richest place is the graveyard from all the unborn ideas. That's I Les Brown. Les Brown says that. Right. And so ideas are dreams, things that could have been, but never came to reality. So when I say I don't want dreams anymore, it's because I don't want to just be stuck in the dream world. I want to bring those dreams to reality, right? But you got to start with a dream because then you right. don't know if you're there or not. But the, the I'm, not, I'm not saying dreams are bad. Dreams are beautiful. But the dream is only a dream. A dream is something in your imaginary world that you can see. So the reason why I say I don't want just dreams, I want dreams to turn into reality so that way my ideas don't go to the graveyard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want them to be real. So one of the things for me, just to just to kind of put worded words to what you just said. So if for me, if I want to be a person that speaks on stage, I want to go to places where I have that opportunity, right? That to make that dream come true or that reality or that thought or that wish. Yes. And so I was there last was it last week? The week before I was in San Diego, did exactly that was in a, in a session where we could stand on stage and tell part of our story in front of a hundred people. How was that for you? It was amazing. I thought, I thought that, you know, I would, first of all, normally I have a very soft voice so people can't hear me. And, um, I'm actually shorter than I'm, I'm vertically challenged. I'll say it that way. <laughs> and so people in the, in my past, I've had a small voice and I've had a small presence, but I know when I was on stage, cause I asked people afterwards, how did I, uh, project, like how, how did I sound? Like I asked for feedback and they said that they could all hear me. And they said that my presence was big. Well, your presence has been big since the day you were born. True. Now, but the revelation of that for me yes. is coming into alignment is, is yeah. what I'm right. Yes. I'm, I'm with you, but I'm saying you on the stage and you since the day you were born has always been the same. Now yeah. you finally coming into the realization and owning all of you is the only difference is that your mindset and how you finally thought about you change. But you have always been you. Right? But that's how the dream part in putting into place those dreams that you want. Yes. I believe that those were God inspired. Yes. So taking the action to have that dream come true. Now is, we're talking. Because right? faith without work is dead. Yeah. Faith is the dream. 
but you have to put in the work for the dream to now be reality. You putting in the work and getting on the stage actually took the dream and made it a reality because you got on stage and put in the work for it to become real. Yeah. And that's, that's why cool. I, say I don't want just dreams. I want realities because I don't want to just dream about being on the stage. I want to make it a reality and be on the stage. And here's the steps to make that happen. And I think part of it too is connecting with people that have that capacity to do that. Because sometimes you don't have the capacity to do that by yourself. But when you meet people that can take you there then, and show you or you know whatever that looks like mm -hmm. then again that instills more reality of realness of oh okay in order for me to be here i have to do a b c d to get here and sometimes it's just like oh i know this person so then shoop, you're right there <laughs> or you can just build it yourself you know what i mean like not all the time you're going to get everyone's help sometimes you will get people on purpose to tell you that you can't do it the question is, here's one for you, Paul. <laughs> Do you get mad at blind people for being blind? No. Okay. I got it recorded. It's on record. Paul says she does not get mad at blind people for being blind, right? Right. Okay. Awesome. So how about this, Paul? How many people can see your dream? No I find I okay, so here here's the thing. I, and I know I, I think I know where you're going with this. Ah, but, gotcha. Gotcha. What? No, gotcha. I know, but just hang on, hang on, hang on. I think there's yes, there's there's a step in there because I think that um when you get more clear what your dream is, it doesn't matter if people get mad at it doesn't matter. To, like for me, this is my experience, right? When I get more clear where I want to go and what I want to do and what I what my dream is, who I am, how I want to impact the world, when I get more clear on that, if people don't come along with me, I like okay, that's great. Then I know they're not my tribe, and I go next. That's so I don't get mad at them. But that's not necessarily true, right? What do you mean? That they're not your tribe. That's not necessarily true. And well, they're I not people. Okay. Hear me because out. I hear me out. Work with me. I got you. Let me work with you. Let me work with you. Right. Let me work it out with you. So a lot of times we get upset when people don't support us in our dream. But we shouldn't get upset because those same people are blind to our dream. But what they're not blind to is results. So a person might not support you while you're in your dream phase, figuring it out. But that same person that might not support you then when you finally figure it out and get the results could become one of your biggest supporters later. See, it's not when it's, it's not, it's, it's not if they support you in that moment, it supports, it's if they can support you in the future. So you don't want to burn bridges or cut people off because they didn't support when they were blind. Oh no. Right. No, 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 no. See the result of what Poe's doing and everything else. Now these people might become your biggest contributors. You never know when the time of the help is going to come. So and that always, makes it more of a flow. So you don't always have people with you along the way. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I understand. Right. <laughs> That's why I always ask people that because people get upset. Well, my family didn't support me and my friends didn't support me. So it's yeah. not their assignment. No, it's your, no, it's not, the, it's not their dream. It's your dream. So you have to build it, which is your responsibility. Yeah. And that's how you take something out of the invisible and make it visible. Like we're so powerful, Poe. Play, play a game with me. If you close your eyes right now, eyes closed, eyes closed. Okay, cool. Say McDonald's. McDonald's. Can you see it? Yep. How? Your eyes are closed. <laughs> but exactly. that's part of. But okay. no, no, exactly because your eyes are closed but you can still see McDonald's. Okay, open your eyes, close your mouth, say rock star. Rock star. No, no, close your mm. Oh. Now say rock star with your mouth closed. Say rock star with your mouth closed. Okay. Did you hear yourself say it? Mm -hmm. How could you hear yourself say something that you never said? 
right? Which yeah. only shows how powerful we are because we can see even without our eyes. We can mm -hmm. speak even without our mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means we're very powerful. There's something within us that's more powerful than the flesh because with our flesh, if we can't do this, we are not supposed to be able to see. If our mouth is closed, we're not supposed to be able to speak, which means there's something more powerful inside this flesh that allows me to see things that I can't see and speak things that I can't say. Mm -hmm. And once we understand our power and who we are, like, hold your hands up. Cool. Now you see these little lines in your hands, they're called your finger per what are they called? The little, the little, the little, little small lines in your fingers. What are they called, Poe? Po? Finger fillings. Prince. Prince. Exactly. Fingerprints. Yeah. Fingerprints. Tell me, Poe, <laughs> somebody with your fingerprints. Say that again. Tell me someone else with your fingerprints, Poe. Not gonna happen. Exactly. Which means, Poe, you are a masterpiece because there's not another person like you. Right. But most people die a copy because they don't appreciate their own blessing of being a masterpiece. Yep. Most yep. people will try to emulate someone else instead of knowing how to be them. Yep. Most people can sing everyone else's songs. <laughs> but they don't make their own. They know everyone else's life. But then when it comes to who are they, they have no clue. And they have True. no clue because they haven't learned how to fall in love with themselves. Yep. That's so good. Earlier, you were talking about um, reports, right? Self evaluations, things like that with energy, right? You know, mm. emotions, energy in motion. Okay. Well, if we are created in God's image, that automatically makes us creative, right? Yeah. Because yeah. if we come from a creator, we are creative automatically, right? Okay, yeah. cool. We created businesses, right? Yeah. That means a business is made in our image, right? Okay. Okay, cool. I've never heard that before, but go ahead. Okay, so Poe, do you have a social security number? Yep. Cool. Does a business not have an EIN number? What's an EIN? What's that? That's the business number. So uh... when, you, when you get an LLC, you get an EIN. An EIN is the social security number for your business. Okay. Okay, cool. So, Poe, if you don't have no customers, do you have a business? No. Okay, cool. There's a verse in the Bible that says when you see God, it, God is going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Right. What is the key word in that scripture? Faithful servant. Faithful servant, good and faithful, but the key word is servant. Servant, yeah. What is a servant? Isn't a servant a person that provides a service? Okay. What does a business do? Provides a service. Exactly. So <laughs> if a business provides a service and you don't have a bit, no customers, maybe you haven't been good and faithful in your business. And if you don't like your bank account, maybe you haven't served enough people. And if you are serving people, are you good and faithful in your service of people? Yeah. Cool. So in business, they do this thing called a SWAT report. SWAT? They do a SWAT. A SWAT okay. report stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. And they do a What's the T? Threats. Threats. Oh, threats. Yes. And they do a SWAT report weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. And the reason why they do a SWAT report is because they want to evaluate the business to get a return on investment, an ROI. You've heard of an ROI, right? Yeah. So the reason why they do the SWAT report is to evaluate how the business is doing, the good things in the business, the bad things in the business, new opportunities for the business, and what's threatening the business, right? Somebody's calling me. Calling you? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I have to get this call. Can we continue on in a few minutes? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Sorry. 
Okay, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, bye.